This titanium wood stove sent to me by Timu may be the best value on the market today. If you're interested in hearing more about it, keep watching. All right, before we get started, a few things. First, I'd like to thank Timu for sending out this titanium wood stove so that I can share it with you, as well as a couple of other products I'll share with you in a moment. Now, the backstory is, is that Timu reached out to me quite a while ago with an offer to collaborate. Well, at that time, I wasn't interested, but more recently, I began looking for some small stick stoves that I could purchase or have someone send to me that I could review and share with you. So I reached back out to Timu to see if they were still interested, and of course they were, and they offered me a budget that I could spend on anything on their website. Well, okay, that's only partly true. The link they gave me that I could choose products from is actually somewhat restricted. It isn't everything on their website, and it did not include the twig stove that I was most interested in. However, I had a budget that I could spend. I looked through everything on their, web, on their website that they were able to send me, and this is what I settled on. And in fact, I think I made a, a really good choice. Okay, so we're going to cut away in a moment to my inside of my house where I will be assembling this stove so you can see it up close and get a few more product details for it. And then I'll be coming back outside here. We'll get the stove lit up, and I'll talk about my experiences using it so far. All right, now just before we focus in on the stove itself, Itself. I wanted to show you what else Timu did send along with this as a package. These are at my request. They gave me a little extra spending money. So the first thing is this fireproof mat. It's a siliconized fiberglass mat that opens up quite wide. Well, I can open it right up for you, but uh, I'm going to be folding it back up again. And this is great for putting inside of your tent especially if you have a tent with a nylon or a canvas floor. And even if you don't have a floor in your hot tent and you want to go directly on the ground, this still does provide some protection from any combustibles that may be underneath. So, yeah, we're going to be using this right now, in fact, as a place to assemble the stove on. I'll explain more about that in a moment. The other th Another thing that they sent was this. This is a fiberglass stovepipe or chimney wrap. So I asked for this because it was at my thought at the time that I would be using the wood stove with a nylon tarp and it may well still be the way I go about it. Yes, I do have a hot tent that will be delivered shortly that I can use it with, likely will use it with, but I also feel that since this is really is an ultralight setup, that going with a tent, yes, it's not as fully enclosed, but going with the tent and closing it up as much as reasonable is a nice combination, at least worth trying. Plus, that's where this comes in. By wrapping this around the stovepipe, I can around where the tent would come in close to it, or the, or the tarp in this case, this would give me protection. So very simple, long, wide, well, not very wide, two inch wide, I guess, uh, fiberglass, uh, ribbon, I guess, and a couple of uh, pipe clamps on it. And the last thing is, and again, more of an experiment because I have not tried this in a hot tent before. These are one of the fans that use the heat from the stove to generate enough electricity to rotate the fan blades. Concept being, if this will work on top of a wood stove inside of a tent, you can circulate heat more effectively, prevent all of it from rising to the top and staying there. This will circulate the hot air more. That'll be something we'll give a try as well. Now, I'm going to put those two items aside. Actually, I'll take them right out of the pitcher so I can give myself some space to work and bring the case back in. Now, as far as specifications for the stove go, I'll give you those once it's assembled. There's a bit of a process for it. We'll talk about the process as we go along. Now, here's the reason for using the fireproof mat. You don't have to use this. If you don't have one, you don't need to use it, obviously, but it really does have two purposes for me using it today. Number one, is to keep my table clean. The stove has been used a couple of times. It is sooty. I have wiped it down a little bit so that I didn't get all blackened while I was putting it together, but it's nice to have something to keep your work area clean. But more importantly, if you're trying to assemble this out in the field, it's a good idea to have something you can work on top because there is a couple of parts that are loose and you would not want to lose them 
especially in the snow. So you could work on top of the case. In fact, that is legitimate, but having this just makes life easier. All right, I'll show you what I mean as I go along. So here's the case that the stove arrives in. It is a fake leather Naga hide, but a vinyl of some type. The name Zoom Loom on here. Uh, yeah, double zippered nylon webbing for straps. Reasonable given the mission and the weight of this stove. It doesn't have to be all that big. So I will go into the components in a second. I just want to finish off in the case. The case does have a zippered pocket right here in which the manual resides. Great place for it. Now I'll just put it aside. Now the case is padded, kind of like something you might put your laptop in type of thing. Is it necessary? Probably not. One of the things is not so much you're preventing damage to the stove as you're preventing damage to anything else you might have with you by stove parts poking through. That's the way I'm looking at it. All right, first thing right on top is a pair of work gloves. Yes, they're cowhide. They're not expensive ones, but you know, they're not bad either. They were a little bit small for me, but they're stretching into shape and I've used them. And I highly recommend you keep these handy when you go to assemble the stove. It's not that the stove has a lot of sharp edges on it. Actually, it's not too bad at all. It's the chimney. The chimney, you really want to be wearing a pair of leather gloves the first time you roll the chimney into shape. If you don't, there's a high chance you will cut yourself. I did because I didn't think it was necessary to wear these. I wish now that I had, no, the cut wasn't bad, it was, but I just want to point out, you will have a high chance of cutting yourself if you don't wear these gloves. Now, the other thing, of course, is you're handling hot stoves. Nice to have a pair of leather gloves. Let's put those out of the way. Now, I am going to speak to the chimney and talk more about it later. So you can see that the chimney is all rolled up into, this is its compacted size. It has a number of titanium rings around the outside. There are eight rings that help hold the chimney in shape once it is stretched out. And it has one pipe clamp that will hold the chimney onto the top of the stove where the, the uh, top of the stove is. So that, well, we'll assemble that outside for obvious reasons. Now, let's bring the stove components out. So I'm going to work, this is the entire stove along with these rods, which are the legs and the components that hold the stove together. I'm going to work from the bottom up. So I'll start by taking the top off. Now, might as well address this right now. This is the draft control. It comes as a separate piece in the kit. You put it on yourself. There are little knurled and screw top knobs right here. Maybe I can focus in a little bit on it right there that set it into place. Uh, my thought on that is after the first time I used it, I had a kind of pop it off because of course it stretched a little bit, not stretched so much, it swelled a little bit and warped. And then I realized, what am I doing? I put it back on, put the screws back in place. And I said, as long as this fits inside of the case with it on, I'm leaving it on because the risk of losing these little screws is just too great in my mind to use in the field to keep putting it on and off. But you can see the damper right there, the draft control and the ring tells you which direction it's going to go. Rings up like this. You have the damper open, rings like this. The damper is closed. All right, we'll come back to that in a moment. There are the two end pieces. One end piece is just, they're all stacked together. One end piece is just the back end and the other one is the front end. And the front end, as you can see, does have a pivoting door, a hinge door on it with a piece of glass. Uh, the first time I used it, it got awfully dirty, but I think that was my fault for the type of wood I was using in it. But, uh, you know, we'll see if it does it again when I get outside. There is a little draft control right down here at the bottom. Again, we'll see that in operation when we get outside. We'll put that aside. There are the two side pieces. They're identical. You can use either one. There's no special way to use either of these. I just want to point this out now so that you can see it. they're curled on the end. And this is the way that it fits together along with the bottom and the sides. You, well, you'll see in a minute. And finally, the bottom plate. All right. Nothing special. You can see it's taken a little tiny bit of warp. And uh, for anybody who does not like to see their stove parts warp, this is not the stove for you. It's going to warp. It's titanium. It's thin. It's going to warp. 
the question you have to ask yourself is, is it going to be too hard to put back together every time? And is it going to perfect performance? And the answer is no to both questions. Easy enough to put back together even after three fires, and it does not affect the performance. I th actually think it probably works a little bit better. The thing seems to have taken a set. All right, now, as far as assembly goes, I will be working so that you can see what I'm doing as opposed to what I might do if I was working outside. But, uh, yeah, okay. Now, end piece, side piece. They, can, they slide together like that. That's what those notches are for. So we'll just lay that into place like that. Actually, the other way around, the other end. So that you can see what I'm doing. Same thing with the next one. They just slide into place. And let's sit like, sit like that right there. And now the door is going to go on this end. And I always have to remember which way it is to operate the door. This is the top of the stove. So you want the stove door opening so that it opens in this direction. The little latch works. And it slides into place exactly like the back end does. Like that. Okay, so there's the body of the stove assembled. Last thing to do, of course, is to put the top on. Line everything up. And I, I, will, I will say that this is not the easiest stove to put together. There is a little bit of a process in assembling it. There are easier stoves out there, titanium hot tent stoves for, as far as putting it together. But I don't think there's anything as light as this, and I stand to be corrected on that. Now, here's where the fun begins. You have these four titanium rods. They're not all thread, but there are threads halfway up the, the, the pipe or the rod itself, and at the very end where these brass fittings are. Now, the brass fitting, or foot, if you will, is on both ends of the, uh, the rod, but you're going to take one off like this, and now we're going to, actually, I recommend you take them all off at the same time. Now you understand the reason why I wanted something to lay everything on was because these are the parts that are easily lost and indispensable to the assembly of the stove. So each rod has these little brass knobs on both ends. One you'll probably never take off on, on the foot end. And little, I believe they're stainless steel, I don't think they're titanium wing nuts that will run up through the threading on the end. Now the first couple of ones that you put on are going to be a little awkward and you'll find the way that you like to do this best. I'm going to try to do this on end this time just to hopefully hold everything in place. So the rod, as you can see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. But that's not a big deal. It's easy enough to slide back into place. But once you get the first rod on, everything goes together well. So you're gonna, there's a hole in the bottom, and you're going to slide it through that shaft you created by putting the two sides together. And the threading will come out of the top. There we go. And now we're going to take one of those brass knobs and thread it onto the top of the rod. Now I'm going to repeat that on all four corners. I'm not going to really crank it down, but once it's all assembled, then I will go back and adjust all of them. So I'll bring it back when I have the other three in the stove. All right, stove is fully assembled. I'll give you some measurements and some views of it before we get it outside. So let's start with the measurements. Overall length front to back, 13.8 inches. Width across the front is 8.03 inches. Height top to bottom is 6.8 inches. And height from the ground to the very top is 12 inches. Now here's the exciting part, 3.6 pounds. Fully assembled, 3.6 pounds. That does include the chimney, which of course I do not have on the stove. We'll be doing that outdoors, but I'll speak to the chimney a little bit more. All right, so that's the basic measurements. The other thing you're going to want to know, of course, is just how big a piece of wood can you get in this? Well, measuring it with my ruler, I'm going to say 13 and a half is your maximum length straight in. I would recommend cutting to 13 just to give you a little bit of playroom. You could angle them side to side and get a little longer. By and large, 13 inches is the length of wood that you're trying to go for. I just wanted to give you a quick look at the door. It does have a piece of glass. By the way, this hinge pin right here does remove if you have some reason you want to remove it, but also be cautious that you don't accidentally lose it by having the stove upside down. And you can see there's just a little ring 
that swings over to lock. Uh, it did not come with a fire poker or a hook or anything else, so you're going to want either a stick or a pair of pliers or something for operating this. Actually, I found it was easy enough to do this with gloves on. It didn't get so hot that I couldn't grab onto the ring for the split ring there for opening and closing. And same thing speaks to the damper on the back. So the damper works here. By the way, you could set it up at the wrong place. You really want the damper sitting over the end, otherwise you'll never get the amper, uh, the damper fully open. So there is fully open and there is fully closed. All right, there's really not a lot more to say about this stove. Man, this is light. I can't get over that. But of course, all the specifications that I'm giving you will be in the video description if you want to uh, see those again. And of course, they'll be in metric as well. All right, now it's time to get it outside. All right, as you already may have guessed, I'm in my backyard. I'm not in the woods. This is what I like to do when I'm testing stoves out is work here in the backyard when weather and everything else permits. And uh, then if it's something I'm gonna be taking to the woods, then I'll do that out there as opposed to depending on it in the woods and having it fail me or not understanding how it works properly. So I did wanna point that out. Now, the next thing I'm gonna point out is you'll see that the chimney is already installed on this stove. I am not going to show you how I did that. And there's a reason for that. And this is a lesson that I'm passing on to you now. The first time I put this stove together, I struggled half hour, 45 minutes to try to get this chimney into the shape. What I failed to do, and what I'm really strongly recommending to you, if you purchase one of these stoves with a titanium roll chimney, is look for a video online that shows you how to do it. It will save you more headache and cuts on your fingers than you can imagine. If right now it's all wrinkled up, it's so mangled, and it's still functional, it's, but it's just so mangled looking that uh, I'm actually tempted to buy a replacement and put it together properly the first time. After the first time, it almost falls together when you unroll it. But that first time, what a struggle. So I highly recommend that you look for a video that shows you how to do this properly. In fact, I did find one. I won't put a link in it. I'm going to let you find it yourself by Pomali. And they show how to roll one of these out. But any number of companies do. Not Timu and not the company that makes this wood stove. They don't have anything out there. But they work the same. All right, that little bit of a rant out of the way. Let's get this started. So I'm going to be using a little bit of split pine to start the fire off. And I should be able to lay that on top. Just a wood wool. Nothing fancy here. I have quite a bit of split pine here. It's not as small as it would be if I was building this out in the woods, but this is so dry, I could probably show it a match and it would combust into flame and I have a pile of dry maple to go along with this. Not very bushcrafty, I know. So of course the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure the draft is open. As demonstrated, the draft is open when the split ring is facing up and down. It's actually quite amazing how something so light can build up such an intense fire. Now the wood I'm using to get this going is pine. I don't know if I just mentioned that or not. It's some very, very dry pine that'll be followed up by maple. Pine burns smoky though. And as that's catching on, that's something else I will mention. There is no spark arrestor with the stove. You can purchase spark arresters separately, not from this company, but I have found them on Amazon and I may do that or I may see if I can fashion one out of a fine enough stainless steel mesh wire of some type. But if you want a spark arrestor and if you're going to be using this with a nylon tent, you really do want a spark arrestor, that's for sure. But this will pour out some black smoke when it first gets going. All right, a couple minutes later, it appears the pine wood that I had there was caught on pretty good. Time to start putting in some pieces of hardwood. I have the draft wide open of course. Yeah that looks good. All right now we can... Some of these are a little long. By the way this only has 12 and a half. I'd say you're safe if you cut your wood to 12. A little short, a little bit more work but uh, If you're cutting wood, it probably doesn't take that much more work. I mean, here's the thing, it doesn't hold a whole lot of wood in here either, does it? Yeah, I 
should be. All right. Another thing I'll mention as I'm loading here is, of course, this stove does not have a means of attaching guy lines to it if the wind is high wherever you're, you're camping. So my thought is what I'm probably going to do is get another pipe clamp of the similar size to the one that's holding it on at the bottom of the stove, put some split rings on three sides of it, and then I'll have that. I can use it at the top somewhere and then run some guidelines out because I did notice on a windy day as light as this is it is or can be quite affected by the wind I think that's a pretty good amount of wood now for the most part I've been running this pretty much wide open but there's the draft control and it's easy to slide back and forth I'm going to leave it open now just so I can get quite a bit of Heat built up in here, more air, more heat. The damper is still wide open on the back, yeah. And I want to get a lot, quite a bit of heat if I can because I want to put that fan on top of this to see if I can get it to start working. All right, we'll let it run a little bit longer and then we'll try that out. Man, on a day like this where the humidity is heavy, you can see the smoke is coming out of the top and then coming right back down to the ground here. My neighbors aren't gonna to be too happy with me here, are they? But once that wood really gets going there and gets really, really hot, it uh, should start clearing some of that smoke out. That's been my experience using it anyway. But you can see the fan is just spinning well. Hopefully it's showing up. I think it should be. I think inside of a hot tent, this would really circulate air. Now you wouldn't need to do much inside of a hot tent, but uh, you know, if you've got a nice low fire and you're trying to preserve it, by shutting down as much of the damper as you can without uh, creating up too much of a sooty fire inside of it. I think it wouldn't take a whole lot to have that fan spin the heat around that you are generating. It's doing a good job out here right now. So I decided to open up, give you a look at what was happening inside. That's one hot fire inside of there. It's amazing how something as thin as lightweight as this titanium stove can take the heat that that's putting out. I'm a five feet away and I can feel the heat coming towards me. Some of it may be due to the fan, but I don't think so. I will tell you this now, it is not an airtight stove. Smoke will leak out from the seams where the side plates and pot type top plate come together. Uh, but uh, I think most people know that going in a stove like this. Is like, it doesn't have gasketing on the door or anywhere else. So it's likely going to have some leakage at least until it gets nice and hot and really starts to draft well up the chimney. But uh, you need fresh air in your tent regardless. So as long as you have some fresh air coming in, you shouldn't have an issue. All right, I think it's uh, time we can wrap this video up. All right, so what are my final thoughts on the Soon Loom Ultralight Titanium Stove sent to me by Timu? Well, here's the first thing I'm going to say. It's only been burned five or six. I can't remember now. So it's in no way can be considered a long-term review. I can say that it has operated flawlessly for the five or six times that I've used it so far. Uh, as I mentioned when I did the assembly, it does warp a little bit, but it doesn't warp so much that you can't get it together or that it's going to impair the function of it. It remains perfectly operable once it is assembled again. You do give up some creature features and some added features that you might find on other titanium wood stoves in order to get that ultralight nature. The assembly of this, I mean, it's based, as we know, it's based on the Seacoat side ultralight titanium stove. It looks awkward, and in fact, it is a little awkward, although I probably get better at it the more I work, the more times I put the stove together. But it's not as easy as some. You just don't fold up the sides and lock it together. You do have to fiddle a little bit. So there is a fiddle factor with this stove. But as long as you know that going in and you're prepared for it, then and you know the tricks and you've got some experience putting it together, it shouldn't be an issue for more people. What you get in exchange is a very, very lightweight stove. That functions. It functions very well for that matter. Uh, what else can I say about it? Well, my experience with Timu was good in terms of how fast they shipped to, things to me. The quality, okay, here's the thing. 
the quality for the price, I don't know that I could have done as well anywhere else on the internet. I don't think you could buy these items this inexpensively anywhere. And that's what I'm going to say about working with Timu. Yeah, they were a little bit restrictive in what it is I could purchase, but that's just an influencer thing that they, you know, the way they collaborate with people. For you as a customer, I don't think, well, you're wide open. You can purchase whatever it is you want. And I feel that you are going to get your money's worth regardless of what it is you purchase from Timu. Shop around, by all means do so. But I'd be surprised if you can find it cheaper anywhere else. And like I said, they were really quite good to deal with as far as shipping and everything else goes. Uh, what else can I say about it? Well, um, okay, and, and this is my fault again. Do watch another video on how to put a, the stovepipe together. It's a struggle. My friend Wade at Woods Walker 1965 suggested using a pool noodle to put it together. That was a great idea. Wish I'd heard that idea before I tried doing this. But there's an even better way of doing it uh, you'll find on YouTube if you get one of these and you want to know how to do it. Uh, yeah, I think that's everything I need to say. Now, I'm going to be using the stove quite a bit more often. I'm actually, you know, this is light enough that I could carry it in my backpack out into the woods, regardless if I'm tenting or tarping or what it might do. I might just take it with me because, um, you know, it's a good sized stove. You could cook on the top of this if you wanted to. And uh, yeah, why not? It, I may just do that. It'll take up a bit of extra space and be a little heavier than some of the stove I carry, but not as heavy as some others that I do carry out into the woods. Okay. I will be putting all the information I've shared with you in terms of the links and the dimensions and all the tech specs in the video description, but I'd welcome your comments or suggestions or questions in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that pathless travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.